So today I'm with Synth from the Skycoin project. Synth, how are you doing today, mate? Ah, uh, great, great. Well, thanks for joining us today to talk about Skycoin. So why did you choose to work on the Skycoin project? Are you sure you're a developer, right? Yeah, so, I was... So, uh, so basically, the, the Skycoin goes way back to about when Bitcoin launched, and I was basically working on Bitcoin. And when I right. started on Bitcoin, it, was, it wasn't it was even on GitHub. It was on Subversion. Um, it was this website called SourceForge. Yeah. And it didn't run on Linux. So I was stuck there like fixing bugs. <laughs> and then I was sitting in the chat room and people were sending me like bounties. Like, you know, it was working and now it's broken. And can you fix this? And and so I started uh, digging uh, more into Bitcoin. And then um, I, I was working at like a hedge fund at the time. And we had all these people in financial services that were coming in and asking about Bitcoin. And I was basically the only one that had used it before. So I got pulled into like auditing and then sort of looking more at the, the cryptography and some of the, the problems that Bitcoin had. So when Bitcoin was started, it was sort of like a duct tape together. I think there was maybe one project lead or one project manager and then t 10 or 12 people that were committing code and it was sort of being merged and like this guy did that and that guy did that and that guy did that and it, it sort of was piece it was subversion so there you can't have multiple people working on it at the same time there's one guy who um has to merge all the changes from these 12 different people so there's the, so there's like the i think satoshi was basically the project manager and then there's all these other people submitting code and he has and the code conflicts with each other and he has to make decisions about you know what it, what does he do so i looked at the bitcoin co code and bitcoin obviously worked but um there were issues with the cryptography library and there's like this thing called duplicate coinbase outputs and there were all sorts of bugs and the and basically they they got it working but they they added something like they thought this scripting language they that was based upon fourth this, this weird programming language. They thought it would be a really cool scripting language and it ended up being useless. So we wanted to have all this Turing complete, you know, uh, basically smart contracts were in Bitcoin from day one, but the way that they were implemented was a train wreck and they ended up having to disable all of the instructions in the programming language because anytime they enabled it, it just en uh, ended up, uh, you know, destroying it and causing like denial of service attacks and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I... I so I started on Bitcoin, and then as, as soon as Bitcoin was launched, then all these developers were saying, well, can we fix this? Can we improve that? And so that became the Skycoin project. And so just about the time, by the time Litecoin was already launched, like Bitcoin launched, and then Litecoin was the next coin. That was the first copy of Bitcoin, really. They, they took the name, changed it, added a new logo, and then Litecoin launched. And by the time the Litecoin launched, then Skycoin, the Skycoin blockchain was already in development. Okay. Was it called and, Skycoin back then? Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Um, the, I don't think it had a name for the first four years. Okay. Um, the And there were three different projects that actually were merged, and they were in three different programming languages. And we had one in C, C++, and Python. And then those projects were all sort of merged by different groups that were trying to do the same thing. And then um, during the project, like, hundreds of people at least 80 people uh probably hundreds uh came in laughed did one person does this and then this person comes and does that so for instance we had uh the first developer of ethereum uh the first person vitalik hired um to write pi ethereum the first developer on ethereum was chen and he's actually the guy that um he left ethereum before the ico to start working on skycoin to, before the Ethereum uh, finished the ICO to start working on the Skycoin consensus algorithm and then he published these our research papers our, uh, our white papers and then he uh, he published the first PhD actually and then he went back to school and so there's this huge history of like generation one generation two generation three generation four of different people coming in um, to the project and like the you know the list guys and the art guy and the and the Qtum guy and the Ethereum well, that was guy. The thing. The, on the on the Skycoin the website guy. where it says created by the original developers of Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a great sub headline because that really gets your attention. Like, really? I, you know, basically it's complicated. Um, so one developer of Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, but and the question is, like, how many developers were really on Ethereum? Like, was Ethereum one person? Did Vitalik build the whole thing? Did, how much work did Chen do on it? Um, 
What about this? And some, it's very funny too, because you have a project and you have a guy who does a lot of work, but he actually, it's like one step forward and five step backwards. Mm -hmm. Like he commits the project to something that's going to cause the project to commit suicide because it's never going to work, but they're going to spend 10 years doing it anyways until, until it, you know, so Excuse me. I, <laughs> I, I think it's, um, so we, we did have a very early on, we had a lot of the early uh, Bitcoin people, um, not the core people, like there's G. Maxwell, Sipa, and Luke Jr. And mm -hmm. I, I consider those to be the three core Bitcoin developers after Satoshi. They're responsible for everything that was added to Bitcoin after Satoshi disappeared. Okay. And um, so I consider them to be the core developers, but the, the, around them, there's this whole nuke shell or a nucleus of other people. Like, uh, like I did the, the SIPO was the one that wrote the replacement library for um, OpenSSL. And he wrote his, uh, the, the, this, this elliptic curve cryptography library called the SEC256K1. He wrote uh, an implementation of that to get rid of OpenSSL. And then I was the one that like did the auditing and I, I found like some bugs and then he fixed them and then he, says that the bugs never existed and he denies that the bugs ever exist you know and it's something like, like no that bug never existed and like um um but what you know so anyway it's, it's just very um uh, so around the core developers there's a whole bunch of people like supporting them and um and so a lot of those people um moved on to other projects basically after bitcoin was sort of finished finished it's never actually finished mm -hmm. but yeah so I suppose that happens, right? And that's that's one of the things that has get caused like the proliferation of lots of different coins is if you have like the original Bitcoin and then as everyone's in consensus, if you like, with regards to how the development roadmap should go, but as yeah. as the team sort of fragments and have different ideas and can't agree on the roadmap, well the logical thing to do then is to just fork off and and uh put your own vision into action and, and then let fight it out in the in the free market as it were. So what's the most interesting thing about Bitcoin and what I don't think people really understand is G Maxwell's role. So Greg, uh, Gregor, Greg Maxwell. Yeah, he so Bitcoin looks like it's this piece of perfect crystalline mathematics that will like withstand a thousand years. You, you think of it, you don't, but people don't understand the human element behind Bitcoin. They don't they haven't met the miners and the mining mm -hmm. pool at the these developers and they're not very public but w one of the things about bitcoin is the early people said it was a social experiment uh today people believe that bitcoin is the dominant cryptocurrency and that bitcoin will be with us for the next ten thousand years and that isn't the, none of the people who work on it or who, who know the people involved believe that um what happened is bitcoin's a social experiment and it could fail because of the miners or because of the incentive or because of the math or because of a flaw in the cryptography library or loss of public con uh, confidence or because the miners are greedy and and the miners will block any you know the, uh, for instance if the bitcoin if you want a billion people using it you need to have this many transactions per second but the the higher the transaction fees the more miners the money uh the more money the miners make so the miners actually will inject fake transactions that congest the network to drive up the transaction fees so they make right. more money and they and if you try to fix this in the code the miners will reject your code change and threaten the fork bitcoin so you actually have to get consent of the miners to make changes and so the developers say we're going to improve bitcoin and we're going to add this feature but it's going to reduce your mining reward and you're going to make less money and the miners will say we're not doing that so like improve it for who right <laughs> yeah improve it for who so they're going to drag bitcoin down with them so we saw these pro the reason skycoin was created was we saw these problems coming that pe the problems people are seeing today we saw this coming like four or six years ago it was sort of obvious at that point that the the, the bitcoin bitcoin was designed to be decentralized and and it was obvious that the whole network was going to come under the control of two or three mining pools like it does, today the whole network is controlled by three mining pools in china it's not bitcoin started out decentralized and it centralized pretty quickly and so we spent like three four years just doing research on database consensus algorithms to re decentralize Bitcoin. So Skycoin was really a reactionary coin because every single thing in Skycoin was really response to a problem that Bitcoin was going to have three or four years. Mm -hmm. On that point about the mining pools, I'm just checking the stats for today. And the BC, BTC.com mining pool has <laughs> almost twice the hash power of number two, which is Antpool. That's incredible.
that's Pareto principle in action, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so G Maxwell though. This, this is the most interesting thing. Uh, Bitcoin, since it's so big, if you have this currency that's going to be worth a trillion dollars, right? right? It's almost. It's like two hundred million or two hundred billion, or it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars, and, and it, we might see it hit a trillion dollars in the next few years. Um, you have this currency with this massive market cap, and which people believe is an immutable store value. They believe it's a digital mm-hmm. gold. And that it's mathematics, that it, and it's immune to the irration, human irrationality that basically drives the rest of society. But the developers say it's a social experiment, like, and they don't. What do they mean by that? And what, what they mean is there's a hundred reasons why Bitcoin could fail, and when Bitcoin fails, we have to be ready with the next thing. So th- their perspective, when they, when the people who actually the core developers of Bitcoin, they said. Uh, they weren't trying to build something that would last 10,000 years. They, they were trying to just get it to survive long enough to for the next thing to come along and for the problems to be fixed. And so Bitcoin will die, but it's like long live Bitcoin because as soon as Bitcoin dies, the next thing will just take over. And what G. Maxwell is absolutely critical because there's a hundred idiots and they this guy wants to add this feature, and that guy wants to add that feature, and this guy wants to add this feature, and that guy wants to add this feature, and this guy wants to do this thing that's going to destroy Bitcoin. And he says, and and G. Baxter says, no, we're not doing that. And and they're like, well, let's compromise. Let's do it fifty percent. Let, let's let's commit suicide fifty percent. And, and he's like, no, no, we shouldn't do that at all. So he sits there and he holds back this wall of idiots that is constantly trying to attack and subvert Bitcoin. And because of him and his basic intolerance is the, the, basically the reason why Bitcoin has survived to, the, to this day. But people like that, they're going to grind him down year after year after year. And eventually he's going to say, OK, I'm not going to defend this. You know, do what you want. Right. Um, so you had something like Linux Torvalds and he, you have a thousand people fighting each other like Microsoft and Cisco and all these people competing, trying to take control of the Linux kernel. And he's like, no, no, no. Yeah, we'll do that. No, no, no. And so he's sort of coordinating this, the, the, the trains. You know, he's like the director. So the trains aren't like colliding with each other and, and, and the thing is imploding. Um, and and the, basically the dictator for life. And that's for Bitcoin, that's G Maxwell. And for the Linux kernel, it's uh, uh, Torvalds. And, that's interesting. But, but as soon as those people leave, uh, I there's going to be a hundred people fighting for power. Is it like the dam breaking almost? And the water comes through. Yeah, it'll it'll. Uh, so, one of the things we wanted to do with Skycoin was we said uh, let's have five thousand lines of code and let's ha- have the same lines of code for the next five hundred years. Give no reason for anyone to have to change anything in the core, um, because if you allow any room for people. If there's one issue where people can say um, this should be this way instead of that way, then it splits the community and they start fighting and you get hard forks and you get soft forks and you get – and then people start trying to add 5,000 of these features and we say, well, yeah, you can add those features but don't do it in the core. And if you shoot yourself, only shoot yourself in the foot. Don't destroy the whole coin. Mm-hmm. And so we tried to actually basically take everything out of Skycoin because – Everything that had been added to Bitcoin basically became a – everything with the block – you saw how the – for instance, the blockchain size uh, divided the community. So anytime you have a choice, like should we paint the shed blue or should we paint it uh, a green, it's half the community splits and they just start killing each other. Because I want the shed to be green. I want it blue. And then as soon as they decide blue, the guy, third guy comes in and says, I think it should be red. And, and this this type of agitation, it, it just divides the community, it dissipates energy, and it goes nowhere. So we wanted to, so we actually took the scripting language out of Skycoin initially, uh, and just, but then we had to add it on later, and add it, but not as a core feature. And it's sort of optional, and it would be enabled on side chains first and tested over there, but not on the main, you know. So th- there was a, there was a sort of philosophy about how do you add these features together uh, into the coin without allowing idiots to come in and add something that's going anyway there's a funny really funny really really funny story about this um g maxwell uh, people were coming to them and trying to add this thing called the merchant protocol which was supposed to make payments easier and they had spent five years almost removing open ssl dependencies mm-hmm. from bitcoin and then they added this thing in called the merchant protocol that added like an x11 certificate thing for verisign and and, and it added this thing a dependency on something they had spent the last five years trying to get rid of mm-hmm. and they're like no let's not do that 
let's and or let's make it optional or oh, and he couldn't stop them from adding it and then um and he said this is stupid and we should never do this but they let them do it and they said okay but we'll disable it by default and then one like four days after the first version of bitcoin was released that had the merchant protocol uh in the source code but not enabled by default they had this bug called Heartbleed, and basically yep. if you had merchant protocol enabled you could send one packet to your bitcoin node and steal all of the private keys from that node and then grab their coins to any bitcoin node attached to the network uh mm -hmm. through the heartbeat exploit so 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 it's very funny because instead of adding features like with your, these other coins like we're gonna have this feature and this feature and this feature and this feature the reason bitcoin has survived this sort of an immutable store value and has really dominated the the ranking is because they actually refuse to add features right keep it keep <laughs> it simple because they added more features because features is also complexity and therefore risk and yes. so on right absolutely yes so that's sort of the origin story of skycoin right but I mean, you've talked about the origin as in, in terms of having roots in the in in Bitcoin, as you probably trace most of the uh, the ancestry of most coins back to Bitcoin eventually. But it talks about itself as being like the infrastructure for the new internet. Uh, is that so, fair to say? So the first thing is to build a successor to Bitcoin, and that means fixing the cryptography issues, the duplicate Coinbase outputs, making. Uh, making transactions one second instead of an hour, eliminating the miners, eliminate, decentralizing the consensus so that Bitcoin isn't centralized. It, it used to be, Satoshi thought that this network would be running on 100,000 computers globally, and it ends up being controlled by three mining pools. So Bitcoin is actually central, it's a centralized currency. It's not decentralized. So we had to create a new mining algorithm, a new algorithm for consensus that eliminates the miners. It's not actually mining, but it eliminates miners and it, because miners are not human element. So we wanted to, so Bitcoin tried to remove the human element from currency, the banks and the, the government and so on, and we replaced it with mathematics, but it only achieved that 50%. Now we have to go the other 50% because the, the miners ended up being another human element that was basically subverting Bitcoin because it introduced this, these problems of greed and the miners were making this money so they might not want to accept changes that were necessary for the network to achieve mass adoption. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, if, but by the time we had finished that, by the time we had done the consensus and we had fixed the blockchain and the cryptography and we were we were happy, like we have the Bitcoin, we have the successor to Bitcoin and, and we fixed all the problems that we can fix because some problems don't have solutions. Um, when we were happy with that, then we realized, wait, 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 there's only 50,000 people on earth that are using Bitcoin, right? And so if, if you're going to achieve the vision of Bitcoin, this has to be a global currency with universal adoption. We don't, why did Bitcoin stop at 50,000 people, right? Um, and it, it's too hard to use, it's too slow, uh, and so on. So we tried to start doing usability, like we did a web wallet. We wanted a default hardware wallet. We started with, you know, deterministic seed uh, generation. We got the transactions down so they were less than 10 seconds. So now the, the transactions can be as fast as a credit card, whereas Bitcoin takes an hour. It's not competitive with it. You go into a store, you use your credit card or you use Apple Pay. It takes a second. So we had to, we said we have to make it faster than Apple Pay if we want a billion people to use this. And then just having the, the technicals, the cryptography, the blockchain that no one cares except for a small group of developers no one really cares about that but it's, it's absolutely necessary it's really the foundation and then the next thing is the usability right but even if you have this perfect coin and you you fixed all of the problems why would anyone use it you know does Hold grandma back, back up one sec so when you know when you said you once you'd solved all of the problems of bitcoin to have that first piece what is that first piece by the time you got there what do you have you have a blockchain that has all the basic services like fast cheap transactions yes. is that what we're talking about because then you can ability of transactions transaction speed and then and then of right. course usability make it easy for humans to use the and the state. decentralization piece because yes. then once you've got that what what you do with it it doesn't matter as much like you can build almost anything yes. on top of that you can build but that's anything the on top of that, it. that's the core so, you're talking about the core being a solid right yes and the, and then what is the third piece how do you get a billion users? Like scale and and usability? Is applications. That... Applications. 
so that's what Skywire is. So we 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 said, uh, okay, here's the perfect blockchain. Here's the consensus solution. Here's the usability, and we have the we and the web wallet and the mobile wallet and the you know desktop wallet and we, and the hardware wallet. And we we do like a default and we make that we try to make it very easy. We have the one second transaction. So essentially, it's perfect. But grandma still doesn't have a reason to use it, right? You you need to create reasons for people to use blockchain and so after those two the first layer and the second layer of the pyramid are laid the third layer is the applications and that's the, that's the capstone so if you want to get a billion users you have to have messaging you have to have video downloading you have to have some way for people to make money and get coins you have to we're going to put this currency in the circulation and i i can create 100 billion coins but if if there's only three people on earth who have those coins it, it, it's not a currency, right? You're not going to be moving around very much, right? <laughs> yeah, you need an economy. You need people spending the coins. You, people have to do something to, to the coins. There has to be services that you are forced to buy the coin to use. And those and, and it has to be something that has widespread uh, spread appeal and that everyone on Earth uses. So, like, uh, one of the things we looked at is bandwidth. And we, mm -hmm. had a, we had a developer doing mesh networking, and so he said, okay, we're doing a mesh networking app. We had another app which is encrypted uh, messaging. We have a social media app. We have a file sharing app. We have um, we have Kitty Cash. We have video games on blockchain. So Skywire, the, the the new internet is not actually it's it's a flagship app, but it's one app. It's a widget on our platform, and we're adding forty other widgets. But that's going to be the first really big widget. So you already got some of these apps. Yeah, yeah, they're all in oh, prototype. Okay. Um, there's a bit of a there's a sort of a delay like we yeah we built a prototype of a decentralized social media platform or yeah we've decentralized 4chan and we did that a year ago but you you people don't care they're like uh, how is it going to drive the price up how uh why should i use this why and so uh, eventually like when for when you have 20 million people on 4chan it gets taken down and then they all run around looking for the new 4chan or when when uh you know snowden um leaks that the NSA is spying on everyone's Skype, then 1 billion people moved over to Telegram in like a month, like two months. You see like 400 million people like migrating like this huge herd uh, to the next app because they don't they don't want to be spied on. And so you have to have your technology and your foundational level uh, layer down and then you just have to wait. And for that day to happen like, when everyone runs yeah. over. <laughs> That's the three That's a good 400 one. million people. That's good. That was, that was one of my questions it was going to be like, what stage of development is Skycoin at? So you've got the first, you've got that first piece you were talking about, the basic network infrastructure, and then and the, the second, second piece, piece is being finished now in the next few months. And that was and the, the usability piece. bit, interfaces, yeah. web wallets, the ability to the use the first. Piece, yes, and the third one is the application. So you know, Kitty Cash, Skywire, uh, people putting. Uh, so Skywire is really fun. Uh, you, uh, it's it's like Tor basically. You have like no, you run a node and you forward packets to each other, right, mm -hmm. between people. And if you provide bandwidth to the network, if you provide packet forwarding services, you get paid coins. And if you're consuming pack, uh, the forwarding services, the bandwidth, you get you pay coins. So this is sort of a little test economy to, where the computers are passing the coins around each other. And one of the big applications is VPN. So mm -hmm. if you're in like New Zealand, you can't use Netflix because they didn't get buy the copyright for New Zealand for some movie because the country is too small, but it's like you want to watch the movie. So they get a VPN to another country like Germany and then they can watch all their movies. And so um, and but then so anyway, so we have like a VPN application where you, you know, you have some Skycoin and you can uh, route your bandwidth through different countries and it's sort of a decentralized VPN. and. So this is just sort of a the, really the first economy on top of Skycoin in our ecosystem, and then we're building other things, of course. But that's going to be one of the flagship things that we're, that's cool. we're having. A, yeah. Well, because that's spending it as like a utility, rather than making a single purchase, you'd be consuming yes. bandwidth on your Netflix or whatever, right? So that's pretty Every cool. Every day. Every so day. We, we right? could have a hundred thousand people, like do 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 do, you know, ten four dollars a month, three dollars a month. And we can we can demonstrate feasibility. We can get the uh, the bugs. And I actually think that's going to be a really popular app. Um, 
because just the, the VPN usage has just exploded mm -hmm. in the last two years, uh, especially but, because people like are worried about like either masturbating and the government's like watching them through the webcam, you know, and it's like uh, for, for incriminating them later on if they want to blackmail them or something, right? <laughs> yeah, right? they're just collecting all that information, right? So that brings us on to actually you skipped us over to like the economic side of things. Um, so I'm always thinking like, so the Sky coin is it's it's Sky S K Y is the actual token symbol, right? So the, the, the supply and demand side of that. So we just had a quick chat there about one of the ways people would well, not consume the coin. It's not like they get burnt or anything, but the one of the reasons why people would want to buy the coin. So that's the demand side. So they could spend it on this, just one of these apps, which in this case was the VPN slash store service, right? So what about the, the supply side? How, how, is, how are Sky Coins created? Ah. Uh. So what happened was when we designed the uh, consent, so Bitcoin, there's a thing called uh, minting of coins and then there's mm -hmm. minting of blocks and then there's consensus. And Satoshi didn't understand that these were three completely separate things. And he act, they actually made them one thing. And in Skycoin, we said these things, the creation of new coins, the creation of new blocks and consensus over the set of blocks are three completely orthogonal, unrelated things that should not be lumped together. So when people say mining in Bitcoin, they're very confused because are they talking about the creation of coins? Are they talking about consensus or the creation of new blocks? And they're not related at all, except Bitcoin lumps these unrelated things into one word. And, and this has caused year, and I've seen so much mm -hmm. confusion. With this. So in Skycoin, we split out the creation of blocks is, is block minting, creation of coins is coin minting, and consensus is a different is different. It's, it's consensus in, in Skycoin is a completely separate algorithm than the block creation. So, and these are modular, so you can have one algorithm for block creation, one one thing for coin creation, and one for consensus. And you can actually have different coins that have different modules for each of because. So in Skycoin, when we refactored Bitcoin. We, we made those three components modular so they can be so in a corporation for instance you might have a public consensus network but you might say that like only these three banks can create new blocks or something mm -hmm. like KYC or you might say if it's a public network like uh, anyone in the consensus network can create blocks and anyone can participate in, in this but no one can create new coins so or in the, it, so there's different rules that you want for different use cases and so in Skycoin, what ended up happening was the only way to we didn't want people fighting over control of the consensus network um, because it created the same problem in mining. So what we did was we all the block, all the coins were created in the Genesis block and then we had to distribute the coins. And then the question is, how do we distribute the coins fairly to, to a billion people to get them in the circulation, to get people using it? So what we decided was we created an app like Skywire. Then we're going to run Skywire, and if you want to get coins for Skycoin, you run your Skywire node, and um, there's a distribution schedule, and the, the, the of all the coins that were created, the 100 million coins, we're distributing, like, um, I think 5% per year, every year for 18 years to this okay. network. So it's a tapered distribution like Bitcoin, so the uh, the inflation rate is less than, like, five, is, I think it ends up being, like, less than 15% per year, um, and it's a fixed rate. And it tapers over time. So over time, the the, the um, as the coins are distributed, the relative the same number of coins is distributed every year, but the relative percentage um, that those coins represent decreases. So this mm -hmm. year you have a thirty percent inflation, then fifteen, and then seven, and then a four, you know four, three, two percent inflation. You know, so um, and then what this does is it doesn't. We didn't like the ICO model that uh, that Ethereum did because if you have this, these guys and like five guys come in and buy out the ICO, they own all the coins, and now you only have five people, uh, and then who own the coin, and then if you come in later, one year year later, you're going to pay a hundred times more per token, Perfect. and those guys still own all the tokens. So what we for the taper distribution, if you come in the Skycoin at year one. Like these people have eight percent. You came in year two. These guys have six percent. People who came in year three will have four percent. So it sort of distributes the coins evenly over um, the whole timeline of Skycoin over 15 years so that the the guys who came in at day one don't own 100% of the coins mm -hmm. which is which is it can be good if you're a speculator right if you own 30% of the ethereum because you bought 30% of the ICO you're, you're you're probably pretty happy right now but if your objective is to actually get the coins in the hands of a billion people then you you have to do this sort of taper distribution so we 
Um, and this is a very controversial point for Skycoin. People complain. They're like, why didn't you do what Ethereum did? And why didn't you do it that way? And why didn't you do it this way? And, and, and none of the ways actually, we did it the best way that we could basically, because no matter how you distribute it, there's this problem or that problem or that problem. And there's not actually a perfect, like now people are doing airdrops. So what they do is they do a huge ICO, right? But five guys bought out the ICO. You have th like three, four billionaires come in. They own all the coins, right? So if three, if there's only like three billionaires who own all your coins for your hundred million dollar ICO, why is anyone going to use your coin? It's an economy of free people. So they're like, okay, we'll do an airdrop. We'll give you the coins for free. So, and, and so they're starting to add the airdrop in to grab users. So with Skycoin, our solution, we're basically going to be doing a continuous airdrop over 18 years, like 15, 18 years. It's like a faucet, right? Based on the bandwidth yeah. consumption or, well, that, we keep talking about that one application, but how, how else could you contribute to the network and earn some of these Skycoins? Like we could have a, we're going to do gaming. So we have a kitty cash, like a cat breeding game and you, you can buy cats and sell cats and breed cats. And we have like an infinite number of cat, like cat, like procedurally generated cats, which is pretty cool. And, um, and we're going to have like give them guns and, you know, and they're going to go like kill each other. And, uh, and you know, it, anyways, like catnip and, you know, you all your cat is catnip addiction and these catnip are going to die. You know, it's like, right. Well, that's, that's one of the apps, right? But, is, yeah, is that is that going to is that going to pay we're... people in Skycoin for using it or what? Yeah, so if you have video games and you people can like there's like a roguelike, so there's like a game and you put your cat in and it's going to die, right? 100% certain, it, you know, roguelike they, the cat will die, but you can win some Skycoin or you can win some items or we're, we're going to do like casino, mm -hmm. like, you know, poker and we're going to have a, you know, slot machine and we're going to have like a Satoshi dice and we might eventually have a um, like prediction market, and we're gonna have a DEX, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna create services for people to. Uh, there's some services that we run, and it's to get people using it, right? right. And there's other services where you're providing uh, services to the network. So we're not just there's a coin like Gollum, and they're doing like uh, computation, and there's a coin like Sia Coin or Filecoin, and they're doing storage, and there's a coin doing bandwidth and so this coin does this thing and that coin does that thing and that coin does that thing and here's messenger coin um and and, and you want to send a message oh you need some message coins in your wallet you don't have enough message coins what message is one message coin right and and so you're gonna have this wallet with like 250 coins and it doesn't make do we need 2,000 coins right so in skycoin we have a skycoin messenger and we don't charge you coins for sending messages we have a vpn and we have a you're going to be able to monetize not only your bandwidth you're going to be monetize your storage we're going to add you're going to be able to rent out your terabyte hard drive or your storage space to other users so they can store encrypted data. We're going to add uh, the ability to rent out nodes uh, for for money. We have a hardware platform, so we have this thing called SkyMiner, which which looks mm, pretty I was cool. About it. Yeah, it has like eight computers, and if you're only using four of them, if you're running this node and that node and that node for your person, one might be like a node just storing videos or something or downloading videos for you, and an and another one might be like a you know, like a, an, anyways, so you have four nodes. So, you're so not you're, you're back up there a bit. So it's this SkyMiner thing, right? This is some, this is a hardware component for Skycoin. Yeah. So this is, this is something else that got my attention because this is, this is not very common. Um, yeah. So we have a hardware platform. Yeah. Go, can you, can you explain that to us? How does that so, figure into the thing? So basically, we don't only have Skycoin. We also we have 30 ICOs. We have a, a thing called it was called Skyledger. Now it's called Fiber. We have a platform that's like ERC20, where people can launch their own coins. But in our platform, uh, there's no transaction fees and there's no gas. We're giving every single company on our platform its own blockchain, and we have an infinite. So in a, in Ethereum, you have a thousand applications shoved onto one blockchain with everyone fighting for each other to pay transaction fees. So you can pay six, you wanna buy a cat on Kitty Cash, it could be $6 sometimes. And um, so it doesn't make sense to put 10,000 applications on the same blockchain and have them fight it out to see who can pay the most fees to the miners. So what we did in Skycoin is we have what's called Fiber, and we have an infinite number of parallel blockchains. So Ethereum can only do 30 transactions a second. And then we, uh, in, in one blockchain of Skycoin, it's 10 times faster than Ethereum. Uh, so uh, 300 transactions per second minimal. And then we have an infinite number of blockchains. So we, this is even better than side chains. It, this is infinite scalability without the side chains. And we can do blocks in one second instead of 30 seconds. So what it means is we can actually embed poker 
and chess. So you might start up like a private blockchain just for a chess game or just for a poker game, and that or just for, and then you and the other players are on that blockchain, and then it starts up and it shuts down. You know, we, we can do things like that, and we can do atomic swaps between the chains, and we can uh, start experimenting with this. But but here's the problem. Uh, here's why. If you look at SkyMiner, there's eight CPU boards in that, and that's actually yeah. a small. That's a small one. There's going to be a 64 board CPU one, and there's going to be a SkyMiner eventually. It has 256 core, or like CPU boards. In so it. this is going to be the hardware that powers this fabric system. Because yes, because every single blockchain, if you want to do the 300 transactions a second, needs dedicated hardware. You're not going to be running this blockchain on your Windows 98 like laptop. Like it, this this block, you run you have 256 nodes. You run blockchain one on node one and blockchain two on node two and application to the B on node three. And so if you're running 60 blockchains, you need 60 nodes. And because I don't want 60 nodes running on one computer fighting with each other and each of them getting 2% CPU and it, and the network would slow down. So if you want, if you're a company and you need 300 transactions per second, you need to have dedicated capacity in terms of CPU and memory. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually, the SkyMiner is a personal cloud. Uh, it, it is like having Amazon, uh, your own Amazon EC2 in your bedroom. And it's it's our hardware platform for launching these blockchain applications. and. And people really don't, I, I don't think they understand right now why we, we did this, but, um, and one example is Delaware is allowing companies to put their, their, if you incorporate in Delaware, you can now put your stock on blockchain from day one. So you're going to have this little yeah. mom and pop bakery in Delaware and their stock is going to be on blockchain and it's going to be traded. The people are going to be able to buy and sell it uh, on the blockchain. But now if we have 10 million companies in Delaware, each with their own blockchain, trading and selling stocks it's going to be you know you don't you're not going to shove ethereum is collapsing right now under like a thousand less than a thousand apps right you're not going to shove 10 million it's not going to be able to scale to this 10 million apps um so we we say yeah we're going to need uh 30 uh, we're going to need uh 60 million computers and there's going to be 200 copies of uh of the node running mom and pop bakery 347 right or this company has like 14 layers, like sub corporations, and each one's going to have like a, their own blockchain, and there are even blockchain ERP systems where you say that like this domain name is owned by this company, and you have a contract, right? And they sell a smart contract for the ownership of that asset, which was previously in an ERP system. They put it on blockchain, and now they can trade between the companies, right? That are on different blockchains. So you have these the, this new financial system is essentially being built on the blockchain. It, it, the blockchain is basically the the new financial system. Um, mm -hmm. the, all these digital assets, real estate or ownership, um, futures contracts, like you're a farmer and you're growing soy and you want to start pre-selling the soy crop that you're going to harvest in six months to lock in the price because you have to pay fertilizer, you have to pay seed, you have to rent your tractors, right? And you have to pay those costs today. So you would want to lock in the price because you're not a, you're a farmer. You're not like a, you're not Goldman Sachs speculating on soybean futures. So then this farmer can, can actually create a digital asset and he can start selling it on blockchain. And then each farmer ha can you know produce these assets and then you aggregate them and then Goldman Sachs can come in and start repackaging them in the futures and derivatives contract. You know, So we're gonna see that happen in the next like four to five years. And and if when you actually look at what the financial people wanna do with blockchain, uh, none of the existing solutions are, is gonna work. So we, we started looking and I worked in finance in these hedge fund I, I talked to these people in the family offices and and what these people are doing and what they were asking for and none of the current solutions were are able to do it basically They're, they don't even come close and you have even our three upsetting so when we started skycoin we said okay this is where we are now this is where the technology would be in six years and then so we sort of tried to build the platform so that we would be able to do those applications that these people are basically asking us for gotcha so then, if I'm getting this right, Skycoin acts as the the thing that stitches all of these infinite blockchains together. Because there's a lot yes. of talk these days about inter-blockchain communication, and they're even they're even <laughs> okay. That made you laugh, right? So they're even yeah, dedicated yeah, projects, right? It but but you, you've almost got that built into the system itself. You've done it, it the other way around, right? It has right. to be built in. Okay. And you don't just start like I'm going to do blockchain. You know, a lot of those interoperability things are ERC20 tokens, and they're still building on top of 
uh, if your foundation is faulty and cracked, the, everything built on top of it is junk. So you like, have to um, yeah, you know, like the 10 X project, they create in the commit network. That's one of the ones that springs to mind, but I think it's a buzzword. I think there was a period when there were a hundred coins during smart contracts. You could say you're doing mm -hmm. smart contracts and you could have a billion, you could get a, list your coin for a billion dollars. Right. Cause there, and, but now smart contract tracks and turn complete contracts is basically bullshit you know it's it, it, they they did it but then no one used it and they re and they need a new buzzwords so this year the new thing is blockchain interoperability but to be honest as a developer i've had people ask us about this and we i have not seen a single blockchain even get atomic swaps working yet they're still fighting over how to do atomic swaps so i'm saying before you start talking about blockchain interoperability just get the most basic like the, that's the hello world the atomic swap is the hello world of blockchain interoperability and i haven't seen a single platform even be able to do that how does so that been successfully we, tested though but who uses it right uh don't know no one uses it so you you can give people a million you can give people like a swiss army knife you give them 60 features and here's the the nail clipper and here's the file and here's the the fire starter and here's the here's the wine open you know you give them 60 tools and how many of those things do people actually use in the real world and so what skycoin does is we don't build the the, the, the 60 bullshit things uh we wait until someone else builds it and then if we see people actually using it then we say oh that's actually useful then we'll okay. it. but we'll let them waste their time with uh <laughs> but we'll let the you know <laughs> okay one other question i had is how has skycoin been funded so if, like from the beginning and now and do you you voluntary do you get paid how's it work so we have a lot of people that were in bitcoin when it was before like the pennies like uh, mm -hmm. we don't even we, we really had never had any issues with money or even we didn't even have accounting until like two months ago we didn't even count how much money we're spending because uh but then we also did a few icos but it was when bitcoin was at a hundred dollars and you have to look at bitcoin and it's up a hundred x or something like if you were we raised over a million dollars and now that's over i think even 10 million but uh that is oh it went up a hundred x we probably have more than the Skycoin market cap just in Bitcoin. I don't even think we know how much Bitcoin we have because we haven't even. Oh, I see. So Skycoin did a did an ICO way back and received Bitcoin in exchange for what the Skycoin, but that was way back, and now it's gone up so much, right? Yeah, we actually ICO'd I think at like a penny, and uh, we had a lot of donations too, like people that just wanted this developed or they liked the project, and they just threw us like thousands. Bitcoin. You ICO'd at a penny. Yeah, and I started a penny, and we, wow. we hit a last year. Well, this year we hit fifty dollars, and now we went, hit ten. So we're up like a thousand x or five thousand x from. It's like the, thirteen dollars uh, today, so that that's that's a lot higher yeah, than a penny. 50, up fifty percent today, I think. Just today. Yeah, <laughs> but it's thirteen dollars. But that's that's uh, yeah. in in wow, right? So that was that's insane. And you're saying now oh. you're funding you you funded out of that pot of Bitcoin that you received. Yeah, yeah. So. Now we, we also have the sky miner sales. So we have like a waiting list of like a few thousand people trying to um, buying the hardware. So now we actually have hardware sales and we're profitable just on the hardware sales. Okay. Um, and we're doing wow. six more hardware projects now with this, the money that we raised from sky miner. We're doing like a hardware wallet. We're doing blockchain power meters. We're doing a bunch of secret projects. Um, we're doing conferences now. We have a giant conference in Shanghai on the on the tenth. We're we're doing like hackathons and we're getting like four or five project teams just working on our scripting language CX, which will be a big thing next year. And then this year we're just focus we're focusing just on Skywire and then we're gonna focus on um, you know, we have a whole marketing timeline. And we actually have so many sub projects that it's a bit confusing and we so we we have our marketing team and they decide like we're just focusing on this for the next two months or we're just right. focusing on this and we're just going to do one thing at a time so we do have like a, a messenger and a vpn and a social media network a decentralized social media network but we don't actually the, the, the people can only pay attention to one thing at a time absolutely so when we do a marketing push it's like we're doing this for two months and then after that we'll do the next thing and the next push so there's right. a lot of stuff in the background and we used to talk about it, but we, we were just being quiet about it because um, it just confuses people because there, mm -hmm. there's so much going on in the background at the same time. How much is a Sky Miner? 
it was one Bitcoin. <laughs> it was. Get, yeah, but you get one. You, you basically get um, one Bitcoin worth of Sky Coin, so it's, it's basically free. But people complain like, "Oh, Ben, Bitcoin! I don't have a Bitcoin." And um, so people uh, thought that the price was uh, thought that the price was a bit excessive. Uh, but they get this, and they were bitching about that. But basically, they get the Sky Coin back, and uh, and if Sky Coins goes up they get a lot of money and they get the mining rewards and we actually looked at the distribution schedule and basically everyone who has one of the first 6,000 sky miners is going to be it's like owning it's like mining bitcoin right when it was at a dollar right. <laughs> you know you know how ridiculous the like the, the you know if you were the first one mining like ethereum or something you you're you know the, the mining rewards at the beginning are extremely disproportionate it's like owning a, a printing press mm -hmm. It's, how how big is this device? Because I'm looking at the photo here, but I don't get the sense of scale. It's about ten, like fifteen centimeter by fifteen centimeter. It's about the size of a toaster. Okay, um, that's pretty sweet. You can just stick it. I can stick it in my, in my studio here, right? Yeah, it, it looks really cool. You're like, yeah, oh my looks, God, what is that? It looks pretty cool, man. People were carrying them. Down, one guy was carrying them down Vegas, and all these people are stopping. Was going, oh my God, what is that? Is that a miner? Are you mining Bitcoin? Are you are you rich? Are you? <laughs> Funny, man. So we're almost out of time, but what's the what's the roadmap look like? I mean, we kind of touched on that, but either talk about the roadmap, or I had this other question about the vision. Like, what what does a success what does a successful Skycoin look like? Like, what does what does that world look like? Like, you know what I mean, can you describe like the how people are using it and the ideal like yes, Skycoin has arrived type of scenario? So. What Bitcoin attendance originally was, was it was designed to be a uh, decentralized currency and it was designed to be replace the banks and to replace humans with mathematics. And so instead mm -hmm. of relying on governments and force and militaries and, and you know, some banker you trust to do your money, you're going to replace the, these infallible human element and corrupt human elements with mathematics. So it's Skycoin's if Skycoin succeeds, it's to do. It's basically does what Bitcoin originally intended and has failed to do. So that was the whole purpose of, of Skycoin was to fulfill the original intention of Bitcoin and where it had fallen short. Because it's clear at this point that Bitcoin is not going. To, it's going to keep going up. Of course, it's going to keep um, achieving adoption, even at an accelerating rate. But it'll eventually falter. Like we've already seen. The limits in terms of Bitcoin's usability and in terms of their inability to like get the transactions down to one second and just to resolve the issues with miners and consensus and so when when Bitcoin starts faltering, um, we want to have projects like Skycoin in the background there to, to replace that replace it basically. Mm -hmm. um, so the successful vision of Skycoin is if uh, you know five billion people are using it. That's okay. the only definition of success, right? <laughs> gotcha. Good. At least you know the number, right? Yes. Cool. Well, I feel like we've only really scratched the surface today, but so maybe we'll have you back on. And we'll dig into it because what's going to happen after this is we're going to get tons of questions and comments. So that'll be good, uh, good juice to pour back into the next interview. So are you up for that? Yes. And the timeline, we're on the 10th. We're having a huge conference in Shanghai. Okay. And we have a few hundred people flying in and uh, we're going to have each each head of each part, like the Kitty Cash head, the CX head. The CXO had the cons head of consensus, the head of uh, like 12 different people, and they actually only have like 15 minutes each to give their presentation. And they're just going to run, do a, we're going to have a live stream, and they're just going to do a complete rundown of uh, almost everything that we're working on right now. Oh, excellent. The hardware team. And so there's going to be a huge amount of announcements coming on the uh, on the 10th. 10th of that's April. Why we saw the price go up like 50% today as people are already like FOMOing. In. They're in anticipation of that, right? The, the, the pre announce the pre announcements of the pre announcements are already leaking right now. It's sort of like <laughs> nice. That's cool, man. Well, so we'll uh, we'll have you back on some time, but for now, synth. Thanks very much for being on the Crypto Vest.